All right, welcome back everyone to the uh, continuation, I guess, of section 8.3, I call this 8.3b. This is the uh, second method for revolving. So you may remember, I hope, that the first method, a little picture here, um, was the washer, the disc method, when the rectangle that I drew was perpendicular to the axis of the rotation, you got a washer or or a disc if there was no hole. But the question becomes, what happens if that rectangle is parallel to the line of rotation? So sometimes we have no choice in which way uh, the rectangles are, parallel, perpendicular, it's based on the axis of rotation and whether you can solve for y or x, which we'll kind of uh, also go over in just a second. But if it's perpendicular, we get a different shape. So we get a shape that's, uh, so now here's a little picture where the rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation. We've got, we're gonna get a completely different shape. We're gonna get what's called a cylindrical shell. Uh, some people might say it's the exact same thing as a washer, uh, which it is in some ways, except for the thickness is built a different way. Cause in this case, your thickness is this way. Whereas the other one, your thickness is this way. So. Um, again, you can kind of look here, thickness here versus thickness here. We're going this way. So the thickness is in a different place. So if I draw in a little inside cylinder. So um, what I'm going to show you here, I'm going to go really quick. And this is just developing the formula. Uh, we all know, I think, how to find the volume of a cylindrical shell. You take the outside cylinder, you subtract the inside cylinder. However, when we're doing these integrals, when we need a dx for the thickness, it's not quite that simple. So we wind up having to do a little algebra. I'm not gonna go through the algebra. You can try to go through and see how I did the algebra if you want. What's important though for you to write down is kind of like, this is the start of it. So it's two pi um, times the height times R1 plus R2 over two times R2 minus R1. So the, the reason I manipulated this is so that I could fit it nicely into an, in, into an integral. Uh, so we actually call this right here, the average radius. We have two radii, right? We have an outside radii here, up here. And then we also have an inside one, uh, which would be that one, yeah. So if you think about taking the outside cylinder, you subtract the inside cylinder, that gives you the volume of that one shell, and then you add them all together. So the way we do this then to remember a little formula is it's, this is the formula you want. I don't like the formula completely because they use f of x. It might not always be f of x because it might be between two curves. So the idea is, here's what I remember, two pi times the average radius, which a lot of times is gonna be called x but not always because that's only X if we're revolving around the y, y axis. If we move the axis of rotation, that's gonna change. And then uh, the F of X becomes the height of the rectangle and then times the thickness, which is either gonna be DX or DY depending on which way you're drawing it. So I'll walk you through some pictures, walk you through some examples, and then we'll talk a little bit about how do I know when to use the shell method and how do I know when to use the washer method from last section, because that's a pretty important distinction. So um, let me uh, just write this down near the bottom here. Um, oh, this is for later. Actually, I'm gonna pop out of this real quick <clears throat> and we'll do um, a couple examples here. Y equals two X minus X squared and y equals zero, and we're gonna rotate this about the y-axis. Yep, okay, so here we go, sorry about that. So a little picture, just like before, uh, y equals two x minus x squared is a little trickier parabola to draw, so I'm gonna find those um, x-intercepts. So if I factor out the x, I'm left with a, oh shoot, I'm left with a two minus X. So it's got a zero at zero and one at two. So it's an upside down parabola. It looks like that. And then of course, Y equals zero is that line. Maybe do that in another color so you can see it. So there's my region. And we're gonna draw around the Y axis. So remember, you are actually gonna have a choice in every problem ultimately, which way to draw your rectangles. Okay, if you draw your rectangles parallel to the axis of rotation, so in this case, remember, I'm rotating it around 
that line right there. So if we draw it parallel to the axis of rotation, we get a shell. If we draw it perpendicular, we get a washer. So how do you decide? We'll kind of walk through that. Um, you actually have a choice on almost every problem. Uh, but we're going to do this method so you can see it work. All right, so let me do this. So remember the question is 2 pi. That's kind of in there. I'm going to write it out for you. Average radius times the height of the rectangle times the thickness. Let me get rid of that so it's a little bit smaller. All right. So I always start with the thickness. The reason I always start with the thickness is the thickness is dictated for you. And once you decide which the thickness is, you're stuck with X's or Y's. So in this case, my rectangle is this way, right? It's vertical, which means I have that little width there, which is DX. If I draw it this way, a little bit of width that way, it's DY. So this is forced on me. Once I decide that, everything else, I have no choice. I got to put everything in terms of X. If they happen to be in terms of Y, then we got to switch them, okay? So my uh, limits of integration we've already figured out are zero and two. The average radius, let me show you the average radius. The average radius of try to write is the distance from the rectangle, and you can put this rectangle wherever you want, to where we're rotating. And if you just think logically about it, that's just x. If it was up, it'd just be y. If the axis of rotation was over here, there would be x plus whatever that distance is. So we'll kind of talk that through again. So the average radius is just x. The height of the rectangle, is just the top minus the bottom. In this case, it's a zero. So the height of that rectangle is just a 2x minus x squared. And then the thickness is the dx. There is the shell method in action. Typically, the shell method is actually a little bit easier to integrate because notice I don't have to square things. I just distribute. So typically, you know, it might be um, a little bit easier. So let's do one with a little hole in it. Uh, y equals x squared y equals x plus 2. And also, let's move that axis of rotation. This time, we're going to go about x equals 3. I'll walk you through the process again. y equals x squared. Whoa, my gosh, it's an ugly parabola. Just pretend it's better than that. y equals x plus 2 looks like this. So first things first, I'm going to find these points of uh, intersection, which is x squared equals x plus 2 x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, factor x2, x1 minus plus, you get x equals negative 1 and 2. So this point right here is negative 1, 1, and this point over here is 2, 4. I don't know if I'm going to need the x's or the y's, it depends. All right, and we're going to rotate around the line x equals 3, so that's this pink line right here. So to stay consistent, I want to use this method. So I am going to draw my rectangles parallel to the axis over here. Remember, everything's dictated by parallel or perpendicular. I could actually draw my rectangles perpendicular if I wanted to, and then do the washer method from last section. The only problem with that you might see, remember the right curve and the left curve are different. Whoops, are different here and here. So I'd have to break that up into two regions. So I want to kind of avoid that. So that's one thing I look for, trying to decide which way to draw them. Uh, the other thing might just be, look, everything's already in terms of X. Say, hey, let's make my life easy and draw them that way. But if these are really easy to switch from X's to Y's, right? The X, Y equals X squared is X equals the square root of Y. Y equals X plus two is X equals Y minus two. So they're really easy to change. So we'll uh, talk a little bit more in just a second about how to pick. So here we go. It's now, again, I drew my rectangles parallel to the axis of rotation, so it has to be a shell. 2 pi, average radius, times the height, times the thickness, again. So we start with the thickness, because that's dictated by how I drew those rectangles. If I drew them horizontal, it would be dy, but I drew them vertically, so they're dx. Remember, if I had drawn them horizontally, I would have been doing a washer method instead of a disk method, or instead of a shell method. So now everything's in terms of x, right? So now my limits are negative 1 to 2. The average radius, again, is from the middle, that rectangle, anywhere in the rectangle, doesn't really matter where we say the middle, because it's the average. That green line is the average radius 
That's why this picture is so important. Notice this distance right there is that X from the last problem that we did. That's your X, this little distance from the origin over is X. So that means the green line is three minus X because that whole line right there is three and we're gonna chop off the X, three minus X. So the average radius is three minus X. The height of the rectangle is figured out just like we did in the last problem. It's just the top of that rectangle minus the bottom of that rectangle. So the height of that rectangle is the line, which is the X plus two minus the parabola, which is X squared times my DX. So we'll go over a lot more in class. I'm gonna just put together right now to try to show you when to do which, which one and why you might pick. You might pick wrong. You have your choice on every problem. The only time you don't have a choice is like if you think about a problem like this, x squared plus 2x minus 1. I can't switch this from x's to y's. I can't solve this equation for y. You know, if it's y equals x plus 2, x equals y minus 2, big deal. So I could go x's or y's, dx or dy. It doesn't matter. But this one, I would be stuck. So that's one thing to look for. The other thing to look for is just the picture. Remember up here, if I did it this way, two different rectangles, which makes the problem a little bit harder, not impossible. So let me uh, kind of put that together for you here. When do you use shells? When do you use rosters? So I'm gonna, I can put this like, I'm gonna put this as a rule for you, but really I would just say parallel, rectangle parallel to the axis of rotation is shell, perpendicular is washer. So if you're doing number one, in terms of X around the X axis, the way I think about this is you draw a little picture. In terms of X means it's this way, right? DX thickness that way. Around the X axis, it's gonna be washers. In terms of Y, which is that, DY, right? Around the X axis is gonna be shells. Just think about which way this thing's moving, this way or this way. In terms of X around Y, it's gonna be shells, parallel. And the last one, Y around Y is going to be perpendicular, got to be washers. I don't really memorize per se, one, two, three, and four. I just draw the picture and then I think, okay, look, somehow I have to decide. There's my shape, right? Somehow, do I want to make them that way or do I want to make them that way? Sometimes it was not going to matter, but once you decide which way to draw your rectangles, everything else is dictated for you because the first thing you have to do is put a DX or a dy, and then whether it's parallel or perpendicular dictates the method. So hopefully you can uh, handle a few of these tonight. We'll go over some more in class um, tomorrow. See ya.